nice let's just pour the wine no, let's pour a glass of wine let's have a pot so it's uh it's very dark in this graveyard oh a bit more i think oh yes oh keep going yeah oh don't be shy There we go. Oh, cheers. Cheers. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. We'll start we'll start recording the podcast when that bloke's gone home. What bloke? Didn't you see him when we walked in? No. Oh the one with the hammer and chisel. Just by the entrance. No, didn't you hear like no. a clink clink? No. Oh, oh Yeah, I, he frightened me to be honest because it's so dark and I said, What are you wow, you're working late. Um, but he said he wouldn't be long. He's just old. He's a, he was just a bit annoyed that they got the spelling wrong, so he was just altering that. He said he'd be gone. It's a bit weird. Mm. This time of night. It is, isn't it? But Where you know. See him? Well, it was obviously something he needed to get done. So yeah, I can't hear him anymore. So maybe he's gone. Let's crack on then. <laughs> it's very, very dark and eerie. It is. So we thought we'd do a, a dead, creepy Halloween special podcast. Yes, from our local graveyard. Yeah. This is the dead centre of Abergavenny. Did you mm. know that? No, I didn't know that. Mm. Talk a li- shall we talk a little bit about Halloween? Yeah. Whilst we're having our wine. And some of the... Uh, what is Halloween all about? Exactly. Because our kids want to dress up and do trick-or-treating. They love Halloween. They do. It's got quite a dark history, the um, the Welsh and Celtic culture of Halloween. So, and some people call it different things, don't they? Halloween, the origins of Halloween can be traced back to the ancient Celtic festival of Samhain or Samhain. Um, it marks the end of the summer mm-hmm. and the harvest, and the beginning of the cold, dark winter. Ooh. And it literally, the fest, the whole festival, symbolises the boundary between the world of the living and the world of the dead. Wow. And November the 1st is considered the end of the summer and the start of the month of death in the Celtic calendar. Do you know what? I have noticed that a lot of older people do pop off, don't they, this time of year? Do you often find, I think, actually it happens in the animal community as well, it's almost like their body says, do you know what, we haven't got the strength to get through a winter. Mm. We've done all right through the summer, yeah. but we haven't, got, we haven't got it in us now for the winter. Yeah. Enough's enough. Maybe they get some sort of viruses because everybody seems to be ill at this time of year. Mm. Kids go back to school, everyone's got stomach bugs, flu... Everything and maybe yeah, that's maybe why it is it, the virus is. It's, yeah. it's possibly it's that everybody's resistance is lower. It could and be. there are more deaths. Yeah, I suppose I'm I'm looking more on the consciousness side of it. The, yeah. you know, the subconscious says, you know what, we enough's enough. We it's can't. a good point though. It's mm. a fair point. Apparently though, the in the the whole festival around the month of death is is based on. Um, animals uh, where herds would be gathered from the pasture on the mountains oh, yeah. so all the sheep that are out on the mountains that were, would be brought in on the 1st of November um, because obviously as soon as the weather starts to get bad it's too late they can't they can't yeah. do so they slaughter them in November right. so they've got meat for the winter ahead right so it's basic it's literally in Wales November is literally the month of slaughter oh, great. because they used to that's when they would slaughter all the animals yeah it is it's horrendous I mean it doesn't it doesn't happen now obviously because you know we've got the means to do that sort of thing all year round we've got Sainsbury's yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> we've, got, 
don't no, there are other supermarkets available so That's there's true, no preference I, I picked a, a higher class one <laughs> well it's kind of like middle of the road you know waitrose yeah. is pretty yeah posh. i didn't want to say Asda's. or lidl no no but yeah, so apparently that's what it is. But um, so the month of slaughter um, is literally, they pronounce it Tachwev, which literally means the month of slaughter in, in, Wales, in Welsh. Um, so they thought, the Celts thought that on the night of the 31st of October, the ghosts of their dead would rise. So large bonfires were lit in villages to ward off any evil spirits that may also be at large. So they believed that the good and the evil would come out in, on right. Halloween night, not just... Right. They thought everybody rose from the dead. So they used, the ashes from these fires in villages would be considered to be um, protective and have cleansing powers and, and kind of a bit like our sage sticks now. Mm. So they would use the ashes then from these bonfires and they'd go around the um, villages giving people the ashes and they'd scatter them in their own hearth and they believed that would that was good luck and it protected them against evil. All right. um, so they used it for divination as well. And they would light torches from the same bonfire in the village and carry them all around like so little little bits of the fi same fire lit from that fire carried around as a, as a symbol of um, protection Ooh. against evil. Yeah, it's like a kind of um, magic, possibly a bit like the sun, you know, it mimics the sun, that maybe it's light from the fire. I don't, I don't know, but it's believed it's possibly linked to the darkness of winter. Right. The fires. Um, and each member of the family, one tradition was that each member of the family in, these, in, the, in the homes around the villages in, in Wales would throw um, a little stone into the fire. Right. And it would have their initial on the stone. They their would own all, initial. Yeah, they'd right. write their initial on the stone and throw it into the fire. And then the next morning... They would search amongst the charred ashes for the rocks, for the stones, and if, if one of these rocks couldn't be found, basically it meant you were never going to see another <gasps> another Halloween. Harsh. You were about to cork it. Yeah. <laughs> that's way harsh. It is, isn't it? Yeah. But they, that's what they believed. It was. Why would they do that to themselves? Well, yeah. I, I just, guess you. You just... know, let's just skip that tradition this year. I don't want to know. Yeah. I guess you just have to hope you did find your stone and it made you yeah. think, well, I'm going to live another year. Oh, can you imagine the kids fighting over it? That was my <laughs> stone. Yeah. No, it wasn't. That was my stone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But also, it's not just ghosts that people feared on Halloween night. It would definitely be the she, the spirits or the fae. Right. The fae were very, are very active on Halloween night. Right. And um, they were very respected as well as feared. So it was slightly different with the Fae. Well, it's important to be on the right side of the Fae, exactly. isn't it? Exactly. Keep them sweet. So they didn't particularly want to repel the Fae. They didn't want to no. offend them. No. So they wanted to keep on the right side of them. Mm. So there were different traditions because obviously they wanted to appease them. So they would leave offerings of food and drink out on Halloween night for the fair right. to find and uh, they'd even set an extra place at the dinner table right, for that elusive fairy um, and they'd you know make sure there was somewhere by the fire for them to, to warm obviously um, we bought a pumpkin this week from yeah we from bought a pumpkin trusty supermarket we haven't um, carved our Sainsbury's pumpkin yeah. yet <laughs> it's not really is it from Aldi? I think ours is too mumble. It was. Yeah, mumble. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Mum. Yeah. Thanks. So we're gonna. So jack o' lanterns are, are what they were traditionally called. Yeah. Aren't they? But in, in that the, can't be Celtic though, can it? Jack o' lantern. Yeah. Is it? In the olden days, jack o' lanterns were carved from turnips. They were. I've seen those on Facebook. Yeah. But they're really evil looking. They out, are really. They look horrific. worse than the actual yeah. pumpkins. They really do. But in folklore, it's said to 
represent a soul who has been denied entry into both heaven and hell. No way. Yeah. And the lamps were lit to guide the dead back to earth. Well, so they get another go. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, it must be. So like, they're in between worlds. Is that reincarnation then or just, no, or just hanging around? No, I think that it was to guide them back to here so that they could then be, yeah, sent over to the right place maybe. But, wow. Yeah, well, I don't where think... is the right place if you can't get into heaven or hell? Uh, maybe they're trapped in some way. Hmm. I don't know. But that's where costumes came from as well, was from the Celts. Oh. The traditional costumes... Um, were really things like it would have been things like fur pelts and things like that and masks right um, that kind of thing it sounds yeah it sounds almost like shamanic wear doesn't it yeah yeah that's oh. true yeah um, they did a lot of fortune telling on Halloween it was time, meant to be the optimum time to be able to, to tell your fortune so All Saints Day All Hallows Day they called it as well um, it was a day to remember those who died for their beliefs um, and they did different traditions like apple bobbing, squying, mir mirror gazing uh, that kind of thing they used to do um, have you have you heard of that thing where you pour egg white into some water and it's supposed to tell your fortune as well no, that sounds yeah. cool, I have loads of eggs well you do it is, yeah, put, so have, you have to look that one up I don't know quite Definitely. how it that tells you sounds... his fortune but yeah. it does Egg white. I've never heard of that one. That sounds into brilliant. Water. Yeah. Mm. Trick or treating, of course, evolved during the Middle Ages when beggars would travel from village to village and beg for soul cakes. It was customary for town criers dressed in black to walk the streets ringing a bell and calling on Christians to remember the dead. Souling was the custom of baking and sharing soul cakes and prayers for all prison souls. What's, Only Christmas soul cake? I don't know. I wonder what the recipe is for soul cake. We have to look on BBC Good yeah. Food for a soul cake. Do you reckon recipe? they do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They can't. They wouldn't have had sugar in cakes in those days, would they? I don't know. They just sweetened them with all the honey. Other, they'd have had honey, they? and so they would. Yeah, fire sticks is and torches and bonfires had further grim significance on the eve of all saints day oh have you heard of queen mab no she's a fairy and she was referred to in shakespeare's play romeo and juliet oh and she was literally the fairy's midwife queen mab oh um and she's described as a small in romeo and juliet yeah i didn't even know there was a fairy in that yeah called queen mab oh and apparently she's described as a small creature who performs midnight pranks upon sleepers. But do you oh know yes, I know. I can picture her now. I'm just thinking of that film with uh, Claire Watson. Claire uh, Danes. <laughs> <laughs> is Queen Mab in that film? I think she is. I think I think she's she's possibly the witch that gives them the spell. Do you know? Do you know what she does? I just saw a light behind her. Yeah, the the weird stuff. Uh, moving around it's hard to focus there's a little tiny light right behind you i'll keep talking yeah um, keep going but yeah she um she was pretty she sometimes fulfilled desires i can't imagine what that means no no but she would also well, leave christmas lists isn't ah it? Yeah. maybe yeah. maybe collected christmas lists yeah. of people but she would also leave bliss nasty blisters on the lips ew you hear that herpes Her yeah mm. so if you wake up around halloween with blisters with herpes, with herpes you've made you've had a visit from queen mab that's it so yeah can you hear that yeah that's so that cool. is so cool my torch is flickering is it yeah right the evening express in 1910 you're going to love this, Linz. Oh, yeah. It observed. It is the night of nights in the year when the spirits of the dead take deep delight to walk abroad and disturb trembling humanity. Oh, my God. Don't you love that? Oh. I absolutely love that. I wish I'd written that myself. We're trembling humanity. Trembling humanity. How cool. Here we are, sat here trembling, waiting for them. Yeah. 
Look at the moon. Oh my God, look at the moon. Oh my God, get a photo of that quick. It won't come out on an iPhone oh camera. Oh my God. It's too iPhone-y. That's, it's, it's already gone. The moment's passed. Oh, wow. Well, the moon just appeared from behind the clouds. I'm going to turn my torch off And a now. cloud, very... It, it it's sped, gone as quick as it arrived. It sped past it. There's a few happening, actually, but there's no way we'll catch that. I just saw another light over there. Um, yeah, I, I've seen... I literally saw up there, I thought I saw like a black head. Really? Along the hedge line. And over there, something more whitish. I, a white, you would imagine, would glow. It wasn't that bright, but. Oh my God. Um, but yeah, there's. Um, there's a few things. Mo yeah. There's a few things happening around us. Mm. Of course, the other thing about graveyards is. Of course, the graveyard guardians. The animals. Yeah. Yeah, the dogs. They used to. No, what they used to believe that the first person to be buried in the graveyard would be grounded to the earth mm. and it was their job to look after the rest of the souls in the graveyard so of course nobody wanted their relative to be the first one to did you hear that distant cry then what was it like a bit like a ah. but it, it literally sounded like it came from a mile away so it probably was it. someone a mile away going, ah! Oh my God. Yeah, I'm hearing all sorts when you tune in. But yeah, they, so they didn't want, nobody wanted their relative to be the first one to be buried in the graveyard because it means they, they couldn't go to heaven. So they would usually bury a, a dog well, it would be an animal. Most often it would be a dog. And of course they wanted the most fierce looking dog that to, if it was going to guard a graveyard. It's going to be a big, big black dog. Um, which is why you see so many black dogs, spirits around graveyards. Do you know what? We're in the modern end of the graveyard here. I think in a bit we should, find, we should move into the old Yeah, part. you're right. We should. Um, either right by the church yeah or just this top end but yeah. this would this would have been farmland probably until until maybe recently. 50 years ago yeah yeah obviously we know that there's older bodies here but uh, we'll have a bit of more wine yeah and um we'll go what we'll do is we'll have a little wander around the graveyard and have a look at some of the graves yeah yeah because um, I don't know if you, um, when I mentioned to Daryl earlier in the week we were coming here right and he did say that one of his relatives might be buried here oh ah, right okay we could have a little look out I didn't know I didn't know we had Welsh roots Daryl I saw something down there to the edge a, a, a light no it was dark it was um, to the edge of where the graves end it it almost popped out and back in. Okay. It could be the the guardian. You know, like if you were the guardian of a graveyard, so first buried. Yeah. You're like, oh, okay, that's me, and obviously they add add bodies to your patch and you, you kind of know your boundaries you, you know it's, it's within this walled area that i'll mm. guard do you think you'd get a bit miffed when they extend it to yeah the field at the side and it's like it's a bit unfair i think they should mm. put another a second guardian so you could yeah. do shifts yeah because you know you never get a day off would you no literally yeah, you, they're constantly adding to your duties, aren't they? Yeah. With each burial, your workload increases. Mm. That's very true. That is very true. And here's the other thing. On a serious note, we are actually sat right next to the graves that were exhumed. It's a long, long story, so we won't go into it. Yeah now but i have written about it it is available on www. 
clairebarrand.com. Yeah. Yeah, if you have a look at uh, the story I wrote about the graves that were found at the bottom of our garden, they were exhumed as the road was being extended and they were reburied. Now, these children, mostly, um, were never given a proper burial at the time in the 1800s. But talking about guardians of the graveyard, we didn't realise that they were there, and we. Did went, you see the K two? K two. Oh, K two is going, going off. Okay. And it's because you're talking about them. Yes, it is, isn't it? Yeah. It, oh, look you, at the moon as well. Oh, the moon's come out too. If that's you, that's a is nice. Is that a fucking ice cream? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's an ice cream van. Maybe it's it's coming for the children. <laughs> Do you think that the, the mics will pick that up? They're going to have to edit it in. No, it, yeah. <laughs> wow. What? And then, what is an ice cream van doing? All, in in all honesty, at midnight, it's playing its because it's midnight in the middle of Wales. What the, <laughs> what the fuck is an ice cream van doing playing its tune? Maybe one of that the... That is the uh, weirdest thing. Maybe one of the graves is of an ice cream van drive. Oh my God, did you? Yes, I did. Who's with us? Hello, we're not here to hurt you. Can you just step a bit closer if that's you? Come and say hello. We're just here to say hello. Just to finish the story, yes. the, the children um, are buried. They're right. We're sat right next to them now. They were reburied here in this churchyard, and the bottom of our garden. We used to keep pet rabbits, and when we feed, we were feeding them one night. Both both of us saw and heard this thing that. I can only describe as a creature because it was it was in the tree above us, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. So it was like imagine a big creature it climbing a tree. It was the size of a big dog or a yeah. It was massive, a human size thing. Yeah. And this tree was more of a bush. It was quite weak limbed, yeah. wasn't it? So it it made a lot of noise. Yeah. As it was branches. Snapping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really. It was a lot of commotion. Yeah. And we kind of froze and looked up and it was just this black figure looming, staring at us. We didn't have a torch on us, did we? No, we didn't. Um, Anyway, it's only now, later in years later, that we know that there were graves there. I wonder if that was the graveyard guardian. And also, does that mean that, does that, has that graveyard guardian come with these children? Has it? Is yeah. it still down there, or will it have followed them? That's true. It's going to feel a right lost soul if he's still down there on the blooming dual yeah. carriageway. Oh my god! There's never been any reports of any. Oh well, there has in Gilwern, but not. Um, another light just lit behind you. Right. No, but was it bright? Was it white? Was a cup up? Do you know what? Right. This is weird. It's either the... You know these grave lights? Yeah. It's either those. It's either more of those coming on. I don't think they are in... Because that's the old right, part well, behind that, us. There's one right here. Right. Right, I'm looking at it. You know the lights that we saw when yeah. we, were, we were in Ireland? It could be... It's like those fairy lights. Did you hear... Oh, there's a car coming down that lane, I think. Almost like a cough from over there. Oh, my God. We can... Um, I'm muffling the mic and everything. K2 is going mental. Wow. It actually is. That means you're either getting loads of messages on Messenger or the dead are talking to us. Is there anybody dead here?
Oh my god, I, th I saw something walking over there. Really? I'm not kidding. The thing is though, we're raising up, uh, laughing raises the vibration, doesn't it? My torch is dead. No! It is, it's completely no. dead! It's gone, it's gone, it's gone. That means we're relying on one torch, am I? I just... I just... Oh, it's worked again. Oh, that's weird. I saw a white figure. Did walk. you? I, I saw something white walk, move across there. No word of a lie. Look at this flickering light the side of me. Is that your torch? Oh. What is yeah. that from? Where? On the ground at the side of me. Oh, it's, right, if I move, it. Oh, it must be this torch in my wine oh, glass. Oh. oh, the effects of wine glasses flickering on the floor. Mm. Oh, did you see those two eyes? Go back. Right, yeah. whatever. Below it, there was two eyes a second ago. What? That white thing there that you're yeah. reflecting on. Yeah. The, below it, there were two reflective eyes a second oh ago God. below it. So is there, it could be a cat. Well, it's longer now, but maybe it was just, oh, I don't know. Ooh. When you shine a torch around, there are a lot of things. People put these uh, little lights on the graves, which I think is beautiful, actually. It's lovely. But uh, it's... Yeah, the modern graveyards are totally yeah. different to the. Uh, what's that there? Know, is there, that there. A white dot thing. Yeah. Mm. Oh my God, what is that? I don't know, but it's not moving. That's black. It is black with a white dot on it. Yeah, it's like one eye looking at us. <laughs> okay, do I walk towards it? Right, I've just been reading Greg Lawson's book. Yeah. And he said. If he hadn't walked, if he hadn't left that church that night to see what was going on, yeah, he wouldn't know the truth. So really, we should walk towards I'm gonna it. Walk, uh, like, I'm gonna You're walk. gonna have to unmike. Oh, okay. Unless we take the whole thing. I'm pretty it's sure. Not moving. No, it's something static. I'm pretty that's sure. That's something static. There's no way that's. But it does look like something black with with eyes reflecting. I'll unmic and I'll walk towards it. Okay. Okay. It's still there. Do you know what it is? It's one of those granite gravestones, isn't it? It is. Do you know what? It's a piece of granite. Yeah, and they've got reflective bits in, haven't they? Oh. Right, so let's have a look at some of these gravestones. Absolutely pitch black, isn't it? Yeah, let's have a look. Who's on here? David Bufton. Bufton. David David Bufton died September twentieth, nineteen thirty-two, age twenty-nine. What's the name above? Doral. Dorothy. Dorothy. Oh. Beloved wife of David. Oh. Oh, they're both together. Oh. That's sad. Walking through that graveyard with a glass of wine in my <laughs> Look at that one with all the ivy growing over yeah. it. That's beautiful. It is, isn't it? Wow. If we go within, if we go into the oldest part, we're within the U circle as well, the sacred. Right, I think that's definitely, is, we need to go which there. Which is um, druid times. We need to go there. We need to go to the oldest part, right. We're heading to the oldest part of the graveyard now, which dates back to Druid times. Uh, <clears throat> it's a little bit of a walk through these trees. These trees, how old do you reckon these trees are? These well, trees? these ones are young, but down the bottom there, they, um, oh, I don't know. Yew um, trees are really hard to date yeah. because of the way they kind of regenerate. They die on the inside and then we regrow mm. that's why they are the oh. tree of eternal life right okay um and is that so why the, they were chosen for graveyards specifically because well, they I, represent that i don't know i wasn't around at the time <laughs> <laughs> i wouldn't I'm, well if that but yeah it must be but um yeah so i mean you could be talking you could be talking 900 years or more wow. but they're 
they're all they predate the church for sure Gosh. we know that much wow so they could have Look built at the, the mist church. going across the church I, do you know what i just saw that what the oh it's oh, just it's a, a chimney yes yeah, a chimney bloody hell you see you eyes play tricks on you in these places it, we, this is absolutely pitch black so we need to get some more photos otherwise no one no one will believe us we left the studio for this <clears throat> Look at that shape. What yeah, the hell? That's a gravestone. Oh my god. He catches me out quite a lot, oh, that one. Oh my god. It's a statue of a, a woman and she's. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's the, the Mother Mary, isn't it? Oh my god. She is actually my favourite stone in this place. But I didn't realise she was there. My bearings were uh, <coughs> a little bit. Opening the gate. I should creak that gate to make it more graveyard authentic. Yeah, I think we should write to the uh, minister yeah. and ask for. We need it to, to creak. We'll, we'll ask for some uh, squeaking. Whistling. Yeah, squeaking. See, it was quite windy earlier, and it's dropped. The wind has dropped. Right, it might be worth. Turning the torch off just round here because. Uh, okay, don't want to attract attention to me. We hate to get caught out for drinking in the graveyard. Yeah. At our age. I know. When I was 17, I used to hide a bottle of vodka under a gravestone, on tombstone in, uh, in Quick Owl. I used to buy it during the day and then we'd hide it and then at night we'd go. Right, we're going into the. Residents that live around here, so we don't want them. Can you feel the difference already? Now? Yes. Because we're inside the hue circle. Oh my god. Can you feel the energy change? Yeah, I can actually. It's totally different. We're heading towards the church door. Uh, this is a very, very, very old part. I tell you what, if we go. If we go. What? Where should we go? We could go around the back. Look at this. Look at now this is the oldest thing they. I can't remember what they call these. Oh my god! That but is this, huge. this is like a column of. Um, it's like a mass tomb. Oh. I can't remember what they call it. I wish I'd, oh, I. I should have fucking researched, shouldn't I? <laughs> but this is what's unstable. So basically, under here, yeah, there could be a massive um, opening, a tomb. So you could fall into. Yeah, it. that's why they're doing tests make sure okay it's all safe my goodness oh <laughs> shit <laughs> okay. yeah <laughs> oh, did you ever groan did you did you ever Leaves move. I think there might be a bench down here if we go down this end. Okay. It might be quieter, but I, but it's better up there. But if we go down here, there might be a bench. Okay. Oh, actually, just show me talk. Oh, no, it's a tombstone. We can't sit on that. <laughs> Yes, right, okay, there's a bench here. We're gonna oh, see. look at this, someone's left Somebody's a left, that's just so disrespectful. We'll take that back with this. Somebody's left a blinking coffee cup. That's ridiculous. Okay. Who's this bench dedicated to? Oh, right, we'll have a look. Hang on. Thomas Howard Davis, 1931 to 1995. I will lift up mine eyes until 
the onto the, the hill. Oh, oh, onto nice. the hills. Thank you for letting us sit on your bench. Thank you for letting us sit here, Thomas. Now, uh, I'm going to have a little look and see if I can find uh, this grave of Darrell's. Mm. Now, did he indicate whereabouts it might be? He did. Um, I think if we just have a look over there. Okay. Right, it's not. It's not this one here. Okay. Mary, somebody. That's from it. Keep looking. No, it's not, it's this not that one. one. Did he give an indication of what shape it was, or stone or anything? Um, or no, he, no, you know, Dal. Um, mm. Right, it's this one here. Cyr Cyril, there we go. Have a look <gasps> there. Cyril Whitebottom. That's him. We found oh him. Oh my goodness. 1836. Wow. Beloved husband of... What does that say? Dillis? It's, no. Um, it's... It's hard to read these old. Um, yeah. Oh well, let's should yeah. we phone him and find out. Yeah, do you think he'd be in? Should we ring him? Well, it, it it could be gig night, couldn't it? But we can give it a go. Yeah, let's ring him and see what he says. Okay. Oh, how exciting! Yeah. Mm. So. Hey, Daryl. Daryl, it's Claire and Lindsay from Dead Creepy Podcast. Are you okay to talk for a minute? Oh right. Hiya. Hi, how are you? Hi, I hope Darryl. you're okay. So, Daryl, we think we found a grave here and it says Cyril Whitebottom. Do you know who that is? Oh, right. Well, that is my great, great, great granddad, Cyril Whitebottom. And, well, the story with his death is that apparently... He um, got a letter in post one day and it said that if he didn't copy it out and send it to ten of his friends, then he would meet his ultimate doom. <laughs> God, we're all familiar with his letters, oh aren't we? Oh my God, we get those on Facebook, we do, don't we? Yeah. Wow. God, that's amazing. What? So, what... so you mean it actually, it actually worked? What happened? Well... Apparently, he took one look at it and chucked it straight into fire and said, I think it's probably safe to say that that is just an oak. <laughs> and, well, apparently, next morning, he, were, he woke up dead. <gasps> <laughs> no way! Oh my god, that's I can't tell. believe that. Yeah, it's really that bad. That is horrendous. What that's, an awful story. Yeah, I can't believe that they actually work. I've always just discarded yeah, them. I'm going to yeah. think twice now. Hold on, my mum's trying to say something. Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> what, what's your mum saying? Hi, Mrs. Whitebottom. <laughs> My mum's just said that next to him there should be a grave of my great, 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 great Auntie Dillis. Can you find that one? Um, okay. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Um, oh. Yeah, this one, look here. Oh, do you think this one says Dillis? Dillis Whitebottom. It's hard to read because they're covered in um, moss and ivy. But I think this is it. So, Daryl, what's the story with Dillis Whitebottom? Well, she apparently, um, one Halloween, she was setting up a uh, apple bobbing event in local village hall. Ooh. Apt for this time. Yeah, of year. seasonal. Yeah. yeah so, what, what was the story? Well, she disappeared and went missing. <gasps> Uh, throughout the whole event um, and people were getting quite worried about her. Anyway, story has it, a couple of days later when they were draining the tank what they did the apple bobbing in, they found her body at the <gasps> bottom of the tank. <gasps> oh my, my god, god. No. That's, That's really horrendous. That is. Yeah, I know. It's really grim, isn't it? Very grim. Oh my god, Daryl. <laughs> Poor woman. Yeah, God, that's, that's quite a way to go. Well, for years people have said that she still haunts the village all. Really? 
Oh my goodness! Oh my yeah. God! I bet she tells me if you go in that weird, yeah, circumstance. Have yeah. you? Have you ever? I wonder if he's ever investigated that. We should go investigate that village hall. What sort of um, phenomena, Daryl, is reported? Well, apparently, um, you can hear like you know that sound when people have got squelchy wellies on. <laughs> apparently, you can hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, right. Okay, yeah. Right, well, thanks for that, Daryl. Um, yeah, uh, we'll catch you later, well, I guess. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Daryl. Right, bye. Bye. Bye, Daryl, thanks. God, whoa, well, what's some... He always has some great stories, doesn't God, he? God, doesn't he just? But he's still a sceptic at the end of it all. Yeah, he still doesn't believe, no. despite the fact yeah. we found two of his relatives. Yeah. Wow. What amazing stories. Gosh, fancy that. Fancy drowning at the bottom of an apple bobbing tank. I saw a gravestone up there that said they died of, they'd been um, killed by bears. Do you remember that guy um, that was in the paper? It was about 20 years ago now. Killed by bears? And it said it was killed by bears in Kilwin. But we we haven't had bears in Europe in over 600 years. But I seem to remember the story. His name is Thomas... Powell. Right. Um, but he actually choked on a gummy bear. Oh, right. So I don't think he... So, so, so you can choose whatever you put on your epitaph, can't you, really? You can you can make it sound however you want. You can, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Kill, death by bear. Yeah. He, well, it's tr- I guess it's true. He it's, was killed yeah. by a bear. Yeah. But it was actually a haribo. I think we should do some sitting and listening because since we're here. Yeah, okay. Is there anybody here with us? If there's anyone here in this graveyard with us, can you rustle the trees? Shake one of the branches? Should we do a bit of Iolphilus? Yeah. Iolphilus. Hello, is there anybody in this graveyard with us that would like to come and say hello? We come with absolute respect and love and good intentions and we would just like to know if you have anything to tell us. Wheat agent. Wheat agent. Wheat agent. A wheat agent, wow. Is that what you did for a job? Did you- it was at this point that the recording inexplicably stopped. And although our audio equipment showed that it was still recording, we have no further evidence of our investigation. The Iovelus continued to say a few more words before it just stopped. The words that it said were prayer, measure, wheat, agent, wheat, spring, telepathy, threat, remove, prayer, Fear cannot. We hope you've enjoyed our Halloween special investigation into the Clenethley Church graveyard. Thank you for joining us, and until next time, goodbye. <laughs>